neglecting flow losses. The power added to the fluid by the pump in watts is equal to the flow rate in meters cubed per second times the fluid's density in kilograms per meters cubed times the gravitational acceleration or 9.81 meters per second squared times the total dynamic head produced by the pump. Notice that the symbol for power is the uppercase letter P, while the symbol for pressure is the lowercase letter P. The pump power can also be given in units of liquid horsepower or LHP. To convert the power from units of watts to units of LHP, the watts value should be multiplied by 0.00134. And conversely, to convert the power from units of LHP to watts, multiply by 745.7. The pump efficiency is how well the pump transforms the mechanical power supplied to it into power that is added to the liquid. The efficiency is defined as the hydraulic power supplied to the liquid divided by the brake power supplied to the pump's shaft. The efficiency value can either be given by a fraction or as a percentage by multiplying it by 100. An ideal pump has an efficiency of 1 or 100%. A practical pump however would have an efficiency value that is less than 1. The pump losses that tend to decrease efficiency are associated with two causes. 1. Operating the pump under flow conditions other than the pump's best efficiency point or BEP. And 2. Intrinsic pump losses. These can be divided into Fluid hydraulic losses Fluid leakage losses and mechanical losses. The overall pump efficiency is equal to the multiplication of the hydraulic efficiency by the volumetric efficiency by the mechanical efficiency. Fluid hydraulic losses are losses due to the flow of the liquid that is moving through the pump. They are mainly caused by fluid viscosity. If cavitation is present, it would also add to these losses. The hydraulic efficiency is equal to the output head from the pump, divided by the head at the inlet, plus the amount of head added by the pump. Fluid leakage losses are due to the leakage of the fluid from the high pressure side of the pump to the low pressure side of the pump. The pump's volumetric efficiency is equal to the actual flow rate from the pump, divided by the ideal flow rate under a given pump impeller speed. Mechanical losses are mainly due to the mechanical friction at the bearings and pump seals. The pump's mechanical efficiency is equal to the power produced by the pump divided by the power supplied to the pump through the pump's shaft. The best efficiency point or BEP is defined as the pump head and flow rate combination at a given pump speed that produces a minimum amount of losses. In other words it is the pump's operating conditions that maximize pump efficiency at a given pump impeller speed. Hence as the pump speed is varied, the pump head and flow rate corresponding to the BEP will also vary. It is recommended to keep the flow rate within 80, to 120% of the BEP value to avoid problems associated with off-BEP operation. Operating a pump under, head and flow rate conditions that are very different from the BEP condition for a given pump speed causes many problems. It increases flow losses and hence causes the pump to operate less efficiently. Under these conditions, a larger amount of the power supplied to the pump is lost as heat. This is an important consideration, given that in most industrial facilities, pumping systems consume 20 to 50 percent of their total energy input. At the BEP, the pressure surrounding the impeller of a single volute pump is nearly uniform. At flow rates that are lower than the BEP, the pressure surrounding the impeller is not uniform. This causes a large net thrust force to act on the impeller in the radial direction which increases the loads on the various pump components. The increased radial loads can cause bearing failure, pump mechanical seal failure, and failure of the pump's main shaft. The radial forces can also result in shaft deflections that can cause the impeller to come into contact with the pump's casing. The resulting vibrations can also cause damage to other parts of the pump or to the connections between the pump and its inlet and outlet piping. 
Operating at off-BEP flow rate values can also lead to unfavorable pump operating conditions. At flow rates that are higher than the BEP value, cavitation can develop within the pump. Under cavitation conditions, the life of the impeller and various other pump components is adversely affected due to cavitation damage. At flow rates that are lower than the BEP value, suction and discharge recirculation can occur, which decreases efficiency. In case liquids containing abrasive particles are being pumped, recirculation can increase the wear on the pump components such as the impeller and casing.